Hi everybody. So today what we're going to uh, try and do here is we're going to try and recreate the look of a Game Boy video camera. Uh, Nintendo made an accessory for its Game Boy back in the 90s that allowed you to record video with it. And we're going to see if we can recreate that kind of look today using After Effects and Photoshop. And it should be a fairly straightforward process. So to get started here, we're going to start in After Effects, and we're going to go ahead and locate our source footage. We're going to go ahead and pull that into our uh, project window here. What we are, we're actually going to have to do first here is we're going to have to make an image sequence. So I'm going to go ahead and start by making a composition that's 320 by 280. I'm going to make sure that it's uh, 30 frames per second, and it's about 30 seconds long here. And uh, the reason that we're starting this way is we want to actually start with a sequence of images that are uh, sized the way that we want them to be. My, the native resolution coming out of the camera that I recorded this with was a, a 16 by 9 um, aspect ratio. And that's just uh, the wrong image format. Not only do I have way too many pixels here, um, but it's also much larger uh, in terms of the aspect ratio than I want it to be. So I'm going to use this opportunity to go ahead and recompose uh, the kind of look of this just a little bit so I can uh, get a sense of how this is actually going to come out of here. So once I'm comfortable with that, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just tighten this up a little bit. I don't need quite 30 seconds here um, to get the look that I'm after. So I'm just going to go ahead and tidy that in a little bit so that I don't have quite so much footage. And now I should be just about ready to go ahead and export this. So I'm going to add it to the render queue. And once it's added to the render queue, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I change the output settings um, so that I'm outputting this as a JPEG sequence. And then I'm going to hit OK. And then after that, I want to make sure that I'm actually uh, going to output this to its own folder. Because essentially what After Effects is going to do here is it's going to make a, uh, it's going to output a picture for every single frame of my footage. And I don't want that to just be willy-nilly anywhere on my hard drive. I want to make sure that lives inside of a specified, specified folder. So once I have that folder uh, made, I'm going to make sure that I give it a quippy name because that's obviously a fun part of this whole process. Uh, and once I've got a uh, got that all set up, I can go ahead and save it and then send, uh, set it to render. Now I'm going to speed up time here a little bit for the sake of this tutorial, because we certainly don't have to watch After Effects work. And once this is all rendered, I'm ready to move over to Photoshop uh, for the next part of this. In Photoshop, we're actually going to set up a series of or set up an action instead of um, processing this one image at a time, um, and that's going to make this a whole lot easier. So I'm going to start that by first locating one of the photos here, and I'm going to use that to prototype the action that I want to create. Uh, Photoshop actions are essentially a list of directions that you're telling Photoshop um, to complete for a batch of images. So I'm also going to make sure that I create a, another folder here for all of my finished uh, images that are finished being processing to go into. I'm going to tell uh, my computer that I want to open this with uh, Photoshop, and then I'm going to make sure that my little actions palette is turned on. I'm going to create a new action. I'm going to call this Game Boy Look, since that's what it's doing. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the record button. And I know it's recording because the red light's on. First up, I'm going to make sure that I make the background an active layer. Next, I'm going to change the mode to be grayscale. I'm going to discard all the color information. And then I'm going to do a little bit of a levels adjustment here, because I want to make this a little contrasty. I don't want this to have quite so much uh, range in it. I want this to be a little bit uh, punchier. So I'm going to go ahead and make those changes here. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to apply a couple filters. The first filter up here is Pixelate's Mesotint, and I want uh, short lines. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, Pixelate Mosaic filter. I'm going to give it a value of 2. So this is just about what I'm looking for here, I think. Uh, and now I need to make sure that I uh, set the destination for this to be saved into. Make sure this is going to be saved as a JPEG since that's ultimately what I want to work with in, photo, in uh, After Effects. Hit OK. And now I can actually close this and when it asks me if I want to save it or not, I'm actually going to go ahead and save not, tell it not to save this since this is essentially just a template for the set of actions that I want Photoshop to complete. So the next important step after all of this, after I tell it not to save, is to make sure that I go back to my um, Actions palette and stop the action. So now I've got all of the directions that Photoshop needs to process a batch of images. So I'm, to do that, I'm going to go to the File menu. I'm going to use the uh, Automate uh, item here, and then I want to do a batch of photos. And the way this works is I'm going to uh, first specify the 
action that I want to use. Then I'm going to tell Photoshop the source folder for all of the images that I want to process. And once I have that selected, my next step here is to make sure that I know um, that I've told Photoshop where I want to put all of these folders or put all these images. And spe uh, specifically that I want, them to want Photoshop to put them in a folder. Uh, and so once that's all set here, I'm going to put those into that empty folder that I created. I'm going to then make sure that I uh, give these names or give uh, Photoshop naming instructions for a naming convention for how to name these. And again, I like to use quippy names. You can use boring names if you'd like. Uh, and then I'm going to tell it that I want it to uh, create these with a serial number and that the serial number wants to start at zero. And once I hit OK here, what Photoshop is going to do is it's going to go through that source folder and it's going to apply this action to every single image inside of that folder and then save it to my destination folder. And you, as you can see, I've sped up time here because again, we don't need to watch Photoshop work. So once that's all done, I'm ready to go back to After Effects uh, and import my photos here. Now in After Effects, I can actually just grab the folder with all of those images in it, pull it into my um, project tab, and it's going to import that as a uh, as an image sequence. I'm going to drag my, drag my image sequence uh, onto my little composition button here, and now I've got a new comp that is made out of uh, that folder of images, which is outstanding. Um, so this way I've actually used a Photoshop effect on images that I'm turning into a movie inside of After Effects. Now one of the things that I know is still a little bit suspicious here is I think my frame rate is still just a little bit too high because it's still playing back at 30 frames per second which is too fast. So to change that I'm going to go to my composition settings. I'm going to um, change my frame rate to 10 frames per second and now at 10 frames per second this is looking much closer to the kind of footage that that little Game Boy camera produced. So now I'm all done. I'm ready to add, add this to my render queue and call it a day with the effect that I've created. So thanks for listening, everybody. This is how you uh, use Photoshop Actions to alter footage for an After Effects composition.